Welcome, Welcome in to SEC This Morning, brought to you by Yellowwood and the Florida Gators. Yeah. So. Da, na, 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 na. Go, Gators! Come on, Gators! Get up and go! Just enjoy it. I'm just, I'm happy for you. 365 I, like, I'm, days, Peter. I'm happy. I am happy. Gator bait. Wow. Dun, 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 uh, dun, dun. Gator bait. Dun, I, uh, dun, dun. All right, go ahead. Sorry. The dun, 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 dun. Gator bait. Gator bait. The amount, the amount of pleasure, not only you taking it, but the amount of people that have texted me, the amount of SEC Network employees, including yeah. our social media staff mm -hmm. that has gotten in on all of this, the amount of SiriusXM people that have gotten into this right now, the amount of callers. We've had people call in from, what, Georgia? South Carolina, Tennessee, England? all of these people that they don't even want to talk English about the team. Look, that the, they were more happy about this. Our social media team at some point in the middle of a college football Saturday says, we got all these highlights. No, let's show Chris Doring happy on the bus and me sad because Florida defeated in LSU 27-16. In all honesty, they've had this in the can for four years. And I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, they've had some time to prepare. They were like social, like it's like the T-shirts to third world countries. Like they've been waiting to use that right there. By the way, I was ready. I was prepped. Like I already had the LSU full cheerleader outfit that was going to come in. Is that you from were back when you were hoping it. to become an, uh, not only an LSU student but a, an LSU cheerleader? Uh, well, no, because what I had done is I had contacted LSU. I'd be like, hey, listen, you, know, you need to send our annual Florida Gator uh, LSU wager. They sent it. But you were in charge of getting the Florida side yeah. of this to pay off our little friendly well, no. wager. Let's go ahead and get the update here. Yeah, um, I mean, by the way, they went out the same time the labels were created by yep. ESPN the same day. My guy sent it the same way yours did. Yes. We did get an update. I tweeted at UPS over the weekend to try to get some help here. Hello, Hello Chris. Chris. You, you read it in the, uh, in the customer service voice. Hello, Chris. We understand that you need assistance with the status of an urgent package. Please DM your tracking number, address, name, phone number, email, social security number, and blood blood type to Sergio. Sergio is the new MVP. Uh, I swear well, to God. Well, he's not here yet. If, if, if they show up, oh we're bringing the UPS guy on set. All right. Um, or we're going out to him. We got a, a little steady cam. We can go out there and oh do a little gosh. outside of the uh, studio work. 833-814-0732. Maybe we'll get an update from the uh, the mail room coming up a little bit later. But we actually had games to talk about. Other than that one, we will get into LSU Florida in just a little bit. Out opening drive and the opening drive for Tennessee. Actually, the first quarter looked pretty good. They're up 10 nothing, And then all of a sudden, this one play by Carson Beck kind of just kind of changed a little momentum. I thought right? he was incredibly tough, not only with the throws that he made, but running the football, had some some big carries, finished with some aggressiveness. You know, you talked earlier about the pin-up emotion of the, the Florida fans. I felt like there's some pin-up emotion from Carson Beck, and, and yeah, he finally agreed. got the help that he's been needing around him. The offensive line blocked tremendously well for him, not only in the, in the past game where they didn't give up a single sack after giving up five last week, but they ran the football for over 100 yards, so they took a little pressure off him there. I thought the tight end involvement in the game with both Delp and your set they went was with a like big time three part of the tight game. end sets a lot in that game. Well, they, they what I tell you, the, 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 the game plan was to get back to being the more physical team. And in this rivalry, Georgia has always been the more physical team in the last four or five years. So I think that's one of the questions about Tennessee's offense is like when they play somebody that's of equal or more talent, mm -hmm. can they put up the same sort of explosive plays? The answer was no. I mean, this is no. a, a defense that's given up a ton of explosive pass plays. On Saturday, they only gave up one play through the air of more than 15 yards. That was a 17-yard completion. You didn't run the ball in the second half the same way they did in the first half. 96 yards to the first three quarters on the ground and only 50 in the second half. And they got after Nico Iamaliava. I thought everything that they wanted to do in terms of the way they imposed their will on, on Tennessee's offense and the way that they were more physical on the offensive side with the offensive line being so much better with the receivers catching the ball a little bit better, although those drops still are a little frustrating to me. Carson Beck's accuracy reminded me of why he was the first. He, he was my number one quarterback heading into the season, mm -hmm. and it reminded me why. And it just shows, like, if you get some participation from the other 10 guys, he can actually go back to being that guy we thought he could be. I've seen Georgia show up to a game twice this year in which I felt like we're the alpha and we're going to make you cry uncle. It was when they went to Texas Both and UTs. they absolutely crushed it 
uh, against the Longhorns in Austin in that week. And it was not, it was Mike Bobo right from the jump. He calls a long pass play. It didn't get completed, but it was almost like, hey, listen, we're here. And like, this is not going to be some Jake Paul, Mike Tyson pillow fight. Like, we're going to be Hagler Hearns, and we're both of them combined right now. And that one play by Carson Beck almost kind of like ignited him, CD, where it's like, I forget, do you know who the hell I am? Like, he went full Evil Knievel through that dime to Delp. They went back to him a little bit later. Like, he realized, like, dude, just just go play football. And he had a different swagger about him. Between he, that and the crowd, how are you going to beat that? You I don't can't. Think he ever doubted his ability. You know, I think the frustrating part about it is, like, when you're not getting the help from your other teammates. And he, to his credit, he has not pointed any fingers. He's not been a, a, a bad teammate at all. He's gone out there and shouldered a lot of the blame when there's blame to go around. But I, I did think the, the message that was sent from Mike Bobo early in that game is that we're going to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. And to you, the wide receivers, you guys haven't caught the ball really well. You haven't always gotten open. But we're going to give you a shot to be impactful in this game. You didn't hit the long pass on, on the opening play to Ar uh, Arian Smith. But they did hit some bigger pass plays. Dominic Lovick had a nice one on, on a uh, skinny that, or a, a seam that he took uh, for some yards after the catch. I thought that, that, that both tight ends did a nice job of creating a little explosiveness. Delp on a little wheel route down the sideline, too. So I, I love awesome. the aggressiveness of the offensive game. Plan. And I love what Josh Brooks in Georgia has done to create one of the best mm -hmm. home field advantages. Right now, Kirby Smart, since 2017, he's 45-1 at home. Like, they talk about Tiger Stadium where opponents' dreams go to die. No, it's Samford Stadium. And that has become just electric. It's 10 straight top 10 victories in Athens. Like, if there is a home playoff game in Georgia and somehow it gets there and they're an eight seed and they got they get one of those games in there, it's over. It's a wrap. Georgia has done it because you're not going to beat Georgia in that stadium. What right do we now. talk about on, on Friday was uh, Tennessee and, and, and how that defense hadn't allowed – uh, over 20 points mm -hmm. this season, and Georgia goes out, puts 31 on them, and, and they don't give up a single sack. We've been talking so much about how porous the offensive line has been, talk about that pass rush from, from Tennessee's front seven, and yet not only did they not give up a sack, I, there was not a whole lot of pressure on Carson Beck. I don't no. remember a whole lot of times where he was having to, to, to throw the ball under duress. It's a reminder to everyone that watches college football especially the Big 12, ACC, group of five teams, your product is not the same product as what they show here in, in this conference. Nobody would want to play the Georgia Bulldogs. But tell that to the playoff committee because Kirby Smart had some thoughts about that postgame. Like I said after the game, I don't know what they're looking for. I really don't. I wish they could really define the criteria. I wish they could do the eyeball test where they come down here and look at the people we're playing against and look at them. And, you know, you can't see that stuff on a TV. And so I don't know what they look for, but that's, that's for somebody else to decide. I'm worried about our team. They'll probably look at this week and say, well, we just played against one of the best defenses in the country, and we went for 453 on them, you know, and could have been more. So it's just the tale of each week. It is a tale of each week. And Georgia now, kind of like Ole Miss, finds itself in a really interesting situation. They're playing really good football right now towards the end of the season. But maybe more importantly, they may not have to make it to Atlanta, right? Because there is a chance if you make it to Atlanta right now with how jumbled the top 12 are, you lose in the SEC championship game, which is crazy to think about that you might not be in the college football playoff. So not playing in that game might be. I, I think the SEC has been very outspoken about the, the runner-up. The, the team that loses in the SEC championship game is the runner-up, and there's no way you leave out the runner-up of the most powerful conference led by the most powerful person in college football. So if, if somehow, if you're going to say, all right, Georgia ends up getting there and they lose – Okay, and then you're going to say, well, we're going to put uh, we're going to put Alabama in there. We're going to put somebody else. We're going to put Tennessee. We're going to put somebody else in there. Other than that, I don't I don't see that happening. Honestly, I, I it's funny because the more things stay the same or more things change and more things stay the same, like it's probably going to be Alabama and Georgia playing one another. Hey, would that be I mean, would not shock me. And uh, now I don't know if that is I don't know if that's one of the things that can happen. I think I can see Texas and Alabama. I can see A&M and maybe Alabama or A&M in, uh, I, I don't know. Who would you but, say, again, like, the two best teams are right now? The two best teams, I would put. Who are the two best resumes? We already talked about Alabama and Georgia have the two best resumes. I would put, golly, 
I mean, I, Ole Miss did I, just I, beat Ole Georgia Miss, like a week I mean, it's, ago. It's, it's Ole Miss, Georgia, and Alabama. I don't know those three. And by so the way, Texas Carolina? and Texas A&M are right there Where's South as well. Carolina? I mean, South Carolina, again, uh, it, it leads us into a perfect way. Let's get into that game because South Carolina is playing as good a football as anybody right now. It's the battle of the of, of what the Mayor's Cup. Is that Mayor's right? Cup, yeah. the Mayor's Cup, not we, the Governor's Cup. We, we got Cup. that right on Friday. Thank you. 34 to 30. This was the game of the year. As far as if you just said this was the most exciting part of it was because what Lenore Sellers was able to do. Listen to what Shane Beamer had to say about it. What a dude he is I mean I don't like him getting hit in the backfield and defenders bouncing off of him but um, I think I told you the story that after our game against a and with another SEC head coach texted me and you've got bleeping Superman playing quarterback back there and that's kind of what he is uh, as well but just credit to him very similar to the play at Vanderbilt last week where we hit uh, who was that JB down the sideline where he came out of there and ran scrambled left and kept his eyes downfield and was able to make a play and um, just uh, a lot of emotions, but that guy's just a, he's just a player. He just, he, he makes plays and the moment's never, never too big for him. He's amazing with the ball in his hands. Fun to watch, mm -hmm. you know, even when he's under pressure, he's able to elude it. I, I have to give credit to the offensive line. They've improved significantly. Um, how about, you know, the way that Joshua Simons stepped up at yep. the tight end position, Rocket Sanders health, but I think maybe the biggest shout out goes to contact lenses. When, when he had those rec specs on, <laughs> he was not the same guy. The that, same was, guy. that was Clark Kent. Yeah. That dude with, with the contact lenses, he's Superman now. 353 yards. He ends up having five touchdowns, uh, what tied the second most in, in, in school history. The play to Rocket Sanders, that play right there, I mean, you're thinking, hey. determination. I, it is. I mean, Five that, that, different Missouri tacklers that he bounced off or c carried into the end zone. That was impressive. It was everything that you needed and to get over the Missouri schneid, right? It, there's five straight losses. And as soon as Luther Burton catches that pass, you're thinking, oh, here we go again. And yet they didn't do it. And, and Williams Bryce was electric. That place from top to bottom, the cockpit was going crazy. And now look at it, CD. This is a team that in theory, in a 12-team playoff, you go, nobody would want to face South Carolina, right? And yet they're going to be on the outside looking in unless the chaos of chaos ensues over the next yeah, couple of weeks. Unfortunately, I don't think they have a chance to get into the playoff field or to Atlanta for that matter. But I do think that this is a team that's not only sending a message about where they are this year, but the, the trajectory of their program. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about all of the production that you're going to have back next year as well. So this is